This video is going to be on net force, and to find net force, you just have to add up the forces acting on one of the charges. So I have Q1, Q2, and Q3. Let's give Q1 a charge of plus 1 coulomb, and Q2 negative 3 coulomb, and Q3 let's do negative 5 coulomb. And then the distance between Q1 and Q2, let's use easy numbers here. Let's say that they're 1 meter apart. And then Q2 and Q3, about, uh, it looks about equal, but we'll say 1.5 meters. And then if we wanted to find the net force on one of these, let's just do the net force of on uh, Q1. What you have to do is you have to figure out the two different forces on it and add them together. So the first thing we'll do is find the force of force of Q2 on Q1. do that, we just set it up like a normal Coulomb's Law problem. So you get K, 9 times 10 to the 9, Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared, times Q1, which is 1 Coulomb, times Q2, which is negative 3 Coulomb. And you divide it by the distance between them, 1 meter squared. And that will give you 2.7 times 10 to the 10 newtons. Okay, remember there'll be a, there's a negative sign here that you're going to pick up because you have a positive and a negative. But again, I, I generally ignore that and just deal with directions. So we know they're being attracted. Q1 and Q2 are attracted to each other. So I'll draw, draw an arrow going in towards Q2 and write the force up here from Q2. So 2.7 times 10 to the 10 newtons. Now let's find the force of Q3 on Q1. And again, you just set it up like a normal problem. 9 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared times 1 Coulomb times negative 5 Coulomb. Divided by, okay, the distance between Q1 and Q3 is 2.5 meters. And it's good to look at the diagram just to double check that. And we have the 2.5 meters squared. And that, uh, let's take another one. That'll be, so that's uh, 7.2 times 10 to the 9 newtons. And again, we'll have a negative sign here. And you'll see that they're going to be in the same direction. Uh, imagine that this area is smaller than the other one. 7.2 times 10 to the 9 newtons. So if I want to find the net force. And the important part here is that once you have those two numbers, again, what I do is I just I make them both positive, and I figure out if I need to add or subtract. And they're going in the same direction, so I'm going to add. And so I'll just get uh, 2.7 times 10 to the 10 newtons plus 7.2 times 10 to the 9 newtons. And that'll give you uh, 3.42 times 10 to the 10. Newtons. So you see again, you see that these arrows are in the same direction, so there's going to be even stronger force on Q1 than if it were just Q2 or just Q3. And just to, I think it's, it would be nice to just, if you need practice, to try to find the net force on the other charges. So you'll see that in Q2, if you want to find the net force in Q2, there's going to be an attractive force between it and Q1, um, but there will be a repelling force between it and Q3. And so you're going to have to subtract those two numbers because they'll be canceling each other out. I'll just draw you the arrows just to be clear. So Q1 and Q2 will attract. Oh, no, I'm wrong. See, there we go. Look how wrong I am. Q1 and Q2 will attract, and Q2 and Q3 will repel. So you'll add those two. They'll be in the same direction. And for Q3, here we go. Q1 and Q3 will attract, but Q2 and Q3 will, will repel. And just do those for practice.